So let's start this section, which I'm titling here, How to Read and Differentiate a Multivitamin and Mineral Supplement Label. As I've taught my students for many years, the only way to understand nutrition is to understand each nutrient and each of its main characteristics in terms of sources, digestion, assimilation, distribution, storage, and excretion, metabolism and biochemistry, also dosages which differ for pediatrics, pregnancy, adults, elderly, and patients with specific disease considerations, especially including renal and hepatic insufficiency. We also have to be aware of nutrient interactions, synergy and antagonism, drug and disease interactions, and also then clinical applications, durations, and reasonable expectations. So now let's look at some different product labels and see if we can tell the difference between high quality and low quality products. So we notice, for example, that with this product, it contains vitamin A and beta carotene. The problem with supplementing with beta carotene is that that blocks the absorption of other carotenoids. Vitamin D here was provided in the form of vitamin D2, which is generally considered to be ineffective as vitamin D3, cholecalciferol, is the appropriate human nutrient. Furthermore, the dose is completely inadequate at 400 international units. That is not an adequate dose for an infant, let alone for an adult. The common dose for adults these days is 4,000 to 10,000 international units per day, so this supplement provides less than 10% of what would be adequate if it was provided in the proper form, which it is not. Vitamin D2 is considered to be about 30 to 50% as effective as vitamin D3. Vitamin E here is in the synthetic form of DL-alpha-tocopheryl acetate. Vitamin E is actually a family of different compounds and should at least include mixed tocopherols with an emphasis on gamma tocopherol. As with the carotenoids, as I mentioned previously, supplementation with one tocopherol may block absorption of the other tocopherols, and that's why we need to use a balanced or mixed tocopherol blend. The dose of vitamin B6 in this case is completely inadequate, and it's also in the form of pyridoxine hydrochloride. That's an inactive form of vitamin B6. Vitamin B6, when it's in the pyridoxine hydrochloride form, has to get converted into pyridoxal 5-phosphate, and that, of course, requires magnesium. It also has an intermediary step that requires riboflavin. The dose here is far too low at 3 milligrams. Folic acid here was provided at 400 micrograms. Folic acid is basically obsolete these days. Most nutrition companies use methylfolate or folinic acid. Folic acid famously worsens cerebral folate deficiency. Vitamin B12 was provided here in the form of cyanocobalamin, which obviously contains cyanide, which is a poison, especially for smokers and patients with renal insufficiency. This product claims to contain 30 milligrams of biotin. I consider that highly unlikely. Biotin tends to be one of the more expensive nutrients, the idea that they would put 30 milligrams in this multivitamin is unlikely to the point of being illogical, and I think that this product is mislabeled. Such a dose of biotin is pretty unlikely and would be remarkably expensive. Most of the minerals here are provided in their cheapest and worst forms in terms of absorption, and they are all subtherapeutically dosed. Now let's take a look at another product. Basically, this product provides vitamins and minerals in their worst and cheapest forms, and provides also incomplete descriptions on the label. You'll also notice that it has artificial colors, which are completely unnecessary. I don't think anybody really cares what color their vitamin pill is, but in this case, the two colorants that are used are both azo dyes associated with numerous health problems in humans, most notably the yellow dye number six, which is known to exacerbate asthma and hyperactivity in children. Let's look at another product here. This comes from Bayer Healthcare, so-called consumer care. This is one a day men's, so-called men's health formula. Again, the vitamin D dose is far too low for an adult. Vitamin D3 is the proper human nutrient, but 700 international units is an inadequate dose for an infant, let alone an adult. So again, the appropriate dose for adults these days starts at about 4,000 international units and goes as high as 10,000 international units, especially for obese patients. Again, vitamin E is a family of different compounds and should at least include mixed and gamma tocopherols. The dose here is too low. They used here again pyridoxine hydrochloride, and that's okay, but this dose is far too low. The dose that was used here was only three milligrams as previously. Folic acid is obsolete, as I mentioned previously. Most nutrition companies use methylfolate or folinic acid. And again, folic acid famously worsens cerebral folate deficiency. 
Vitamin B12 was again provided here in the form of cyanocobalamin, which contains cyanide, which is a mitochondrial poison. This is especially problematic for smokers and patients with renal insufficiency. Again here, they use the cheapest and worst forms of minerals, all of which are subtherapeutically dosed, but at least this product is better than the one reviewed previously. Moving on, let's look at another product. This is a multivitamin multimineral called Pro Multi Plus from Biotics Research. We see that it provides vitamin A and contains a mixture of carotenoids. We also see that it provides vitamin D in the form of vitamin D3 at 2,000 international units. It also contains mixed tocopherols, and it also contains folate in the form of calcium folinate. Vitamin B12 here is provided in the form of hydroxocobalamin. You'll also notice that the dose is quite a bit higher than the previous examples. In this case, both folic acid and hydroxocobalamin are provided at 1,000 micrograms. So generally what you're looking at here is vitamins in higher doses and also in their active forms. Not only does this form of B12 not contain cyanide, but it actually binds to and removes cyanide and is used in hospital emergency treatment of cyanide poisoning. So again, this form of vitamin B12 called hydroxycobalamin actually binds onto cyanide and helps remove it from the body. You'll also notice that the minerals are in higher doses and also in more absorbable forms. Let's look at another ingredient list here. This product is called Vasculocert, also from Biotics Research. Vitamin D is provided as vitamin D3 cholecalciferol at 2,000 international units per day. Now notice the difference here with vitamin K. So the vitamin K here is being provided in a form called vitamin K2, also occasionally called vitamin K7, which has been shown to have specific cardiovascular disease preventive benefits. We've got calcium folinate and methylcobalamin this time. And then toward the bottom, we notice coenzyme Q10, resveratrol, lipoic acid, and acetylcarnitine. Now, for those of you who understand nutrition, when you see coenzyme Q10, resveratrol, lipoic acid, and acetylcarnitine together, you should know what's being targeted there. And the significance of this is that what we're looking at here is called nutritional synergism. These nutrients work together, coenzyme Q10, resveratrol, lipoic acid, and acetylcarnitine, to improve mitochondrial function, which is very important for cardiovascular disease treatment and prevention. Also, you notice that this formulation provides many phytochemicals, again, in an antioxidant blend, which should provide additional benefit. So now let's compare this ingredient list with the one that we looked at previously in the first example. Nobody who knows anything about nutrition would think that these two products would be capable of providing the same outcome. These products are clearly distinct even though they are both under the title of vitamin and mineral supplements, but these are radically different formulas with different quantities, qualities, and combinations of nutrients. These are not going to provide the same outcome. So now I will conclude with a quick review on how to improve nutritional and medical research such as the study that we're analyzing here. One is we can micromanage these problems. Number two, we can teach doctors to be nutritionally competent so that when they read research, they hold that research to a higher level of intellectual and scientific competence so that junk research like this doesn't get published in the first place. For doctors who wanna learn about nutrition, I typically recommend Alan Gaby's book, Nutritional Medicine, which is now in its second edition, combined with my book, Inflammation Mastery, which is now in its fourth edition. Furthermore, we need to teach ethics and we also need to teach active literacies so that people will recognize and combat bogus research such as this. Finally, my conclusion and summary page is provided here. My main concerns are the problematic biases of this journal, the problematic bias of the editors, the problematic bias of the authors who were funded by the drug and processed food industries, the unscientific exclusion of data especially the failure to include non-English research when they certainly had the resources to translate and include that research. Also, number five, the intentional exclusion of data that counters what appears to have been their predetermined narrative. Also, finally, number six here, nutritional pseudo-equivocation. That is, discussing all vitamin and mineral supplements together as if they were equal when clearly they are not. And I showed you some very good examples of how to read a nutritional label so that you can tell the difference between a high quality product and a low quality product. 
and, as I state here, haphazardly lumping all nutritional supplements together without due regard for quality, quantity, and synergy of those nutrients is intellectually incompetent and scientifically irresponsible. I also talked about some ways to improve this line of research. So thank you very much for your quick attention. The longer version of this video will be posted on my various channels. And again, this has been Dr. Alex Vasquez with a very quick review of this recent article, Supplemental Vitamins and Minerals for Cardiovascular Disease Prevention and Treatment, published in the Journal of the American College of Cardiology, June 2018.